holding something kind of interesting in your hand that uh, it sounds like it does something really crazy. Can you talk to me about what this does? It does, so this is a piece of real nuclear fuel. Um, you're, wait, you're holding nuclear fuel in your hand. I am. At this rough, this is a piece of real are, nuclear fuel. Are we getting radiated right now? Not at all. Totally safe. It's <laughs> great at cocktail parties as like an olive spear. Um, but yeah, there's enough energy in here to power your house for two weeks. And only 2% of this is actually fuel. Um, it's phenomenal. And it costs 50 cents on Amazon. Wait, you could fuel your house. Can I touch it? Absolutely. I'm a little afraid of getting No, 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 it's totally fine. But Totally fine. You can fuel your house for two weeks on 50 cents with this yep, little rod. That's the fuel cost. That's it. Just this tiny little thing. Okay. Uh, Amazing. And only 2% of that is fuel. If half of that was fuel, that's a year of power. So you could put an entire, I mean, you could put a year of power on this little rod. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Okay, that's incredible. But you wouldn't have, I mean, how, how did this work? You, you would have a, a nuclear power plant powering one of, using one of these rods. Right, so we'd have a bunch of those rods. You wouldn't put this on your house? No. Okay. So uh, we have a react nuclear power plant that would have a bunch of those rods, but would be able to provide power for a bunch of people's homes. And the cool thing is, is that shows you the energy density of nuclear fuel. And the fact that something that tiny could power your house for that long and for that cheap. That's why we're working on what we're working on, because you have the promise to have fuel of the future, two million times as energy dense as gasoline, and it's cheap. We heard from you earlier a little bit about regulation. Now, there's, there's a bill that already passed the House. It's going up in the Senate that could help pass regulation that could give you the means to actually use your prototype in reality, right? Right, so the reality actually is we can do it without that <coughs> legislation. But that legislation just makes it easier, it helps us go faster, and uh, there's gonna be more legislation that hopefully follows that. But what our view is, we don't need significant changes to get this done. Our reactor has proven fuels, proven materials. We're building prototypes right now and testing them, and what's, they're working what's, what's blocking you right way now? better. It's just a matter of building out a full-scale prototype and taking that through the regulatory process. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just takes time to make sure you check all the boxes so that thing operates as well and as safely as you expect it to. The, the regulatory process for nuclear should be arduous, it should be hard, it should be technically rigorous. Um, and the challenge with it, though, is it's not well-suited today for new things. But if you can build prototypes and test, then it's fine. And that's we're what we're, we're doing. dealing with government regulation. It tends to be slow moving. That's the cool thing about the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. It's a huge, honestly, misunderstanding of it because it is take time. It should take time. It probably takes too much time. It could be quicker. But they have a mandate to license nuclear reactors if they're satisfactory. And there's very little that can get in the way of that really happening if you have a good technology, a good team, and you can prototype and test it. This might actually be the right time because from what I understand, there's a bunch of nuclear reactors that are about to, uh, they have to shut them down. Right, so unfortunately there's some market situations going on where the pricing for energy isn't indicative of what the real price should be. It's kind of artificially suppressed. So nuclear power plants, especially in the Northeast, aren't getting paid what they should get paid because on really cold days, like last winter when there was a huge amount of snow, some of the only power plants that were actually making power were nuclear plants. But they weren't getting paid correspondingly, they were being underpaid. And that's just an unfortunate artifact in the market pricing for electricity. Uh, that's starting to change, but it's caused some plants to have to be shut down. But the really important thing is we can replace those, and more importantly than that, we can grow the nuclear presence. So, so you can replace them with safer, cleaner technology. That could use their waste as fuel. So there's enough nuclear waste in this country that our reactor could turn all of that into a thousand years of power for the entire US. And no shipping the radioactive waste somewhere else, burying it deep in the earth, it just eats its own waste. Right, so we, we, we should put it in our reactor and move those around, but we wouldn't have to bury it under the ground, it wouldn't last for millions of years. Instead, we just power the whole country for a millennium. That's pretty awesome, right? That is and pretty awesome. And you can replace all the coal, and that's hugely important, because it's not just replacing coal because it's cleaner and better, it's cheaper. And it's replacing gas because it's cheaper, and it works well with renewables. That's the really cool thing. Our reactor. We can run it in power that matches, you know, with what renewables do. And it's a fantastic hybridized system that can be really clean and really affordable. 
it's kind of what the future is. Could we have a nuclear powered car? Um, not directly. The thing, the, the nuclear powered car is really the electric vehicle because you build reactors that then pump power to your houses, to your charging stations, or to other charging stations, and you charge your car that way. So like a Tesla fuel station could run on nuclear power, it in could. effect making a nuclear powered car. It could, and people who live in certain states that have very clean energy, so in the next few years, South Carolina is going to be effectively carbon free, um, very low carbon at that. People who have electric cars there will basically have zero carbon footprint, very close to it. That's what the future should be, right? Because if we move to a zero carbon energy infrastructure generation supply side system uh, with electric cars, you get rid of a lot of that, a lot of that pollution, a lot of that emission. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank yeah. you, my pleasure. You can give this back to you. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks.